Communists, socialists, globalists, anarchists, Islamists will work together to destroy capitalism, Israel, and the West. And I, the second part of that, which I might get into tomorrow on radio, is that there will be um, demonstrations and riots in the streets, and they will start in Europe and come here. Look at what's happening to Europe, because that is your very near future, America, if you don't turn this ship around. All right, there was nothing spontaneous about the anti-Israel protests at the DNC last week. Nothing. It was an organized effort by over 200 left-wing activist groups. These guys, okay? I want to highlight just a few of these groups. The first one being Students for Justice in Palestine. Now, I mentioned them earlier. They're one of the groups being investigated by two U.S. House committees. In 2019, Tim Walls, yes, Harris's uh, buddy, spoke at a conference hosted by the Minnesota chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations and took a photo with an anti-Semitic college professor named Hatim Bazion. Now, he's the founder of Students for Justice in Palestine and its parent group, American Muslims for Palestine. I'd like to call them SJP and AMP for short. AMP is under investigation by Virginia's attorney general for its fundraising and alleged ties to supporting terrorism. SJP has been the main organizer of the anti-Israel protests and encampments on college campuses across the U.S. since October 7th. Shortly after the October 7th attacks, SJP released a toolkit for members to use in organizing protests that said, quote, glory to our resistance. Boy, they've come a long way since the hippie era, huh? Last November, the George Washington University chapter of SJP was suspended for projecting anti-Semitic messages on the outside walls of the university library. The message included, quote, glory to our martyrs and free Palestine from the river to the sea. For anybody who doesn't know what that means is there's not a Jew in all of Israel. River to the sea. An organization called Westpac Foundation helps fund SJP. Now, Westpac is S, uh, SJP's fiscal sponsor, which means Westpac processes all of the tax-deductible donations on SJP's behalf. It's a legal way for SJP to use its sponsor's nonprofit status without them having to register with the IRS as a nonprofit itself. It's a convenient way, really, for groups like SJP. They can avoid having to disclose their donors on tax forms. Oh my gosh, George Soros, Tides, Open Society. Isn't that what we said they were doing all those years ago? Well, yeah, now they've just added Westpac because Westpac gets significant funding from, uh, the George, for, uh, from George Soros and Open Tides Foundation. Uh, and uh, an Open Society Foundation as well as Tides Foundation. Now, it also has raised some additional funds through Act Blue. You know, just to get Democrats elected. Now, that's the dominant paying processing, uh, a payment processing platform that, you know, um, people are going around the country and saying, hey, old lady, you just gave 250000 And there's like, I don't have that money. Of course not, because you gave it to Act Blue. Mm -hmm. Money laundering. Westpac Foundation is also a fiscal sponsor of the U.S. Palestinian Community Network, or USPCN. USPCN was one of the major organizers of the protests at the DNC just last week. On October 7th, USPN released a statement calling the Hamas attack, quote, self-defense operations and should be understood as a legitimate response to unending violence from Israel's extreme right-wing, racist, white, supremacist, Zionist government. Can you get any more in there? Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I love, I love as a self-defense the raping of babies. Uh, yeah, I can see. They got a good point. They have a good point. They also have raised money through Act Blue. These guys are are not you if you're a regular Democrat. Another one of Westpac's foundation's fiscal sponsorships is the Palestinian youth movement. 
Now they're the group who took credit for releasing maggots and pulling fire alarms at the hotel where Benjamin Netanyahu was staying in D.C. last month. The violent protest outside the Israeli consulate in Chicago last week that saw 72 people arrested was spearheaded by a group called Samadun. Samadun. That's an Arabic word meaning the steadfast ones. Oh, the magnificent seven. They were also a major participant in the July 24th protest in Washington, D.C., you know, where they defaced things and got away with it. This group works to secure the release of all Palestinian prisoners, including the convicted terrorists. In 2021, Israel designated Samadun a terrorist group, alleging that it is an arm of the Syria-based terrorist organization called the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Wow, have you noticed there's not seemingly a good guy amongst all of these? They all seem to love baby rape. In 2022, Samadun's leader, Charlotte Cates, and her husband were banned from entering the European Union. Uh, they couldn't go to Europe, uh-uh, no country, because of their ties with the uh, PFLP. Now, Samadun's fiscal sponsor is the Alliance for Global Justice. And the Alliance for Global Justice, they also get money from George Soros and the Tides Foundation and the Open Society Foundation. And, and do you remember Elabella, uh, Elabella, uh, Arabella Advisors? Yeah, they, had, uh, they have a network of funds. They have New Venture. Uh, they have 1630. They have all these different things. It's Dark Money Network. Uh, it now rivals George Soros in the scale of their funding for left-wing insanity. We did a show on it. Look it up. In 20 and 2021, the um, funds of the Arabella Network, New Venture Fund, and the Windward Fund together gave $470,000 to the Alliance for Global Justice, which in turn, oh my gosh, fund Samadun. Isn't that weird? And it's all coming from these people. And that weird. Last November, a spokesperson for Arabella Advisors told the Daily Caller, quote, grants provided by Arabella's nonprofit clients to the referenced organizations were used for project and purposes that have nothing to do with the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Nothing at all. Claims otherwise are as false as they are reprehensible. Well, color me scolded. Now, New Venture and Windward have reportedly disconnect, uh, discontinued the funding for Alliance for Global Justice because of Samadun's alleged ties to terrorism. So there is one point in their favor. In 2018, four of the five Arabella Elibes- uh, uh, advisor funds have also given over $5 million to uh, an organization called Neo Philanthropy, or NEO. Now, this group, since 2021, has also received, it's weird, $37 million from George Soros' Open Society Foundation. Now, one of NEO's fiscal response, uh, sponsorship is Empower Change. Empower Change. That sounds good. What's the M stand for? Well, it's a Muslim advocacy group, which is led by the radical anti-Jewish activist, Linda Sassour. I love her. Sassour is in this again? Yes. And Empower Change also uses Act Blue for their additional fundraising needs. Oh my gosh. So let me just get this right. Again, Arabella Advisors has issued strong denials to the New York Post that any of these funds were used for any purposes related to the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. Amen, brother. And I trust you. I mean, you seem to be laundering money, and you're in with really bad people, but if I can't trust you, who could I trust? Now, George Soros' and the, the Tides Foundation and Arabella Advisors Network are funds for the cutting-edge leaders of what has been called charitable money laundering. Fiscal partnerships and the massive, complex web of groups and subgroups that the money trail winds through allows donors and the purpose of the money they give to remain somewhat obscure. 
well, not somewhat, completely obscure. It can sometimes provide them with a measure of plausible deniability. I gave that money to Act Blue. I, I, oh, I, did they use that? I did not want them to use that money for that. Now, the money that is ending up in the hands of anti-Israel groups that are plugged into this network, the purpose is very clear, but I, I didn't give any money. Mm-hmm. I, I want to come back to this. Communists and socialists, globalists, anarchists, and Islamists will work together to destroy capitalism, Israel, and the Western world. So we have leadership now that are communists and socialists. The socialists are in charge of England and France, maybe with this next election here in America. You also have the unions, the teachers unions, and the SCIU that is doing everything they can to push this agenda to end capitalism and introduce a new system. We also have leadership in companies, the WEF, most elites in banks that are globalists. Now, sometimes they're both of these. Uh, Then you have the Islamists, open borders. These guys are pushing open borders to bring us down to a third world and an Islamic country. That's what the Islamists get out of this. They get to take over the West. And if you've watched the videos from Europe, it is so important you see it's everywhere. These countries are losing their identity entirely. So let me just give you this real quick. The ground game is the anarchists. The communists and socialists and the globalists, their goal is to end capitalism, give us a new system, and it's going to be a global system, an oligarchy, uh, and the elites will run it, and you won't have anything to say about it. Remember the WEF. You're not going to own anything, but you'll rent from these guys, okay? They are, they need to topple the West. They have to. To be able to replace it, you have to collapse it. Well, one of the communists and socialists that we know of is Cloward and Piven. Two professors, I think it was at NYU, uh, and I talked about them years ago. Their whole, their whole uh, strategy is how to collapse the West. And what do you do? You overwhelm everything. Why do you think California voted to uh, give everybody loans and you're not a citizen? Why? It will collapse the system. What will happen with all of these, with open borders? It will collapse the system. But it'll also put other people in charge and they will destroy us on the streets, which will collapse the system. It will collapse capitalism, the Western way of life, and Israel. This is happening right now. And America, this is your last chance. This November is the final call. Get everyone you know to vote. Everyone you know. If we don't have an overwhelming um, election, uh, you're going to see These guys kick in, these guys kick in, these guys kick in, and these guys kick in. And we will have chaos that I don't think we recover from. More on this tomorrow. Share it with a friend. May God save the republic.